NBA all defensive teams are flawed. It isn't about the top 10 defensive players in the league. No, it's it's the top four guards and the top two forwards, or the top four forwards and the top two centers. At the end of the day, I mean, if we're being real, the centers have had the largest impact on the defensive end for quite a bit, yet we only give two of them the award. It's kind of like, this doesn't make sense. Things should change here, because it isn't the top 10 defensive players. And I feel like a lot of the time, you know, a guard who really doesn't deserve it as much as a center gets the award most of the time. And that's what I want to talk about in today's video. You know, looking at the all defensive teams, there's like eight centers you can legitimately make an argument for being an all defensive teamer this year. And only two of them get that, you know, get that recognition. And then you look over at the guard position and I've got... I've got two guys. I've got two guys I would consider in my top 10. Not even top 10, in my top 20 defensive players this year. I only have two guards. Like, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me that four guards end up getting all defensive team awards, but only two centers. I think forwards do end up filling out, but I would probably have some more centers over forwards this year. It's just this concept does not work. You know, someone's gotta go. I mean, there's so many top defensive centers this year who deserve a lot of credit, except they're not gonna get it, and they're not gonna get any recognition. They don't get any accolades, and it just gets swept under the rug at the end of the day when they should be recognized for what they've achieved. And that's kind of sucks, NBA, because, I mean, they've changed it up with the all-rookie teams. I mean, all-rookie teams aren't position-based or anything. I feel like the same argument can also be applied to all NBA teams as well. You know, um, maybe both Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic deserve to be an all-NBA first team. Actually, they do both deserve to end up being an all-NBA first team, but that won't happen because of the positional stuff. But today we're talking about all defensive teams, and it's just, it's just so much more clear just looking at how many centers are game-changers on the defensive end. And then the other positions, it's just like, some of these guys are mainly only good as one-on-one -on -one defenders. Like, what's the value in that if they're not passing to the defender, you know, the guy who's defending? Like, it's just a big difference. Centers are involved in every single defensive play. And, you know, some of the better defenders in the NBA just get isolated in the corner if they are the guard or forward position. It's like, uh, why are we... Why are we awarding those players? But anyways, um, hey, maybe scroll down and subscribe for me. Just click the button, scroll back up. It's pretty easy to do. Anyways, let's talk about uh, who would I have on the all defensive teams if I was allowed to have more players. So I, earlier I said I had eight centers who deserve to be all defensive team players. And I think this, this about sums up every one of them. I say there's five kind of like front runner players for the center position: Rudy Gobert, Joel Embiid, and Miles Turner, DeAndre Ayton, and Bam Adebayo. I also want to throw in Nerlens Noel, Bam, or Nerlens Noel, Clint Capella, and Jakob Pertl into that group as well, who all deserve at least some recognition for how well they've played in the defensive end. And at the forward position, I only have one locked-in player I would consider, and that's Draymond Green. And, uh, I mean, Draymond Green, maybe he's not the best one-on-one -on -one defender in the world, and he's getting older, but he just has some, so much of an impact on the game as, a, like, a game manager and an on-court coach and, a you know, a guy who commands the defense who, even if he's not on the court, he's providing an impact towards his players and his teammates. He's going to be a great coach one day, and it's shown through in every single defensive team, he's, uh, defensive unit he's, you know, let out. And it's, he just does not get enough recognition for it. Even though he's, he's probably not the best defensive player of all time, like he claims to be, he certainly has one of the largest impacts on the defensive side of the ball in NBA history. I would argue for Draymond Green to be top five, even though I don't particularly like the Warriors, Raymond Green just has such a massive impact on the defensive end. And a similar story for Drew Holiday, just not to that same extreme. 
I would say he deserves a lot of the credit for the Bucks' defensive turnarounds. He's pressuring Mike Budenhoser into making, you know, roster decisions, making, uh, you know, lineups happen. He's making sure the defense is running properly, and he's making that defense better. Maybe he's not the same clamps lockdown defender who deserved to be on all defensive first team last year, yet he wasn't recognized as such. But I think this year he should get it with the Bucks, a much more winning team than the Pelicans last year. And yeah, I think Drew Holiday's in there. And Ben Simmons is my other guard who I would consider a top 10 defensive player. He's just been one of the best defensive players in the league. Maybe should be in the DPOY conversation. And I just feel like he's not always, he doesn't always have the top defensive matchup every night. And sometimes he's just resting, he's not getting the tough matchup, sometimes he's just missing games and he's not even playing. So I have to bet, have Ben Simmons probably not in the DPOY conversation, but he should be an all defensive teamer. I don't really have a lock for the other forward position, but if it's not, if it's not locked to positions, I would probably end up with Ben Simmons, Simmons, Drew Holiday, Draymond Green, and then those five centers I consider locks. That's eight players. Uh, you know, I mean, the top five centers. Uh, Joel Embiid, Rudy Gobert, Bam Adebayo, DeAndre Aiden, and... Did I... S- Who have I forgotten? I think I, s- I forgot Joel Embiid, right? Uh, you've already heard me talk about them. That, that would be my first eight. And I would probably throw in Julius Randle as the number nine player. Uh, Julius Randle, you know number three or number four defense in the NBA. The team has really turned it around. The Knicks and number four defense. uh, Take that back. Number four defense in the NBA. He's a big part of it. Really turned it around on the defensive end this year. And if someone deserves the credit for it on the Knicks, other than the coach, it's going to be Julius Randle. He would be number nine. Uh, My number 10 player would probably be his teammate, Nerlens Noel. Just Noel has had such an underrated defensive season, and yeah, just not discussed at all, pretty much. Um, no one talks about how he's filled in for Mitchell Robinson, and I would probably throw him in there as my top 10 defensive players this season. Uh, I think Mikael Bridges would end up as number 11, though. Uh, no, Not sleeping on Mikael Bridges. And... Yeah, I think it's just like, it's not about the top 10 defensive players. It's about four guards. I can't even think of four guards, man. Like DeJounte Murray, maybe? Should DeJounte Murray be in there? Uh, Are you going to put Contavious Caldwell Pope on there? (laughs) Matisse Thibault doesn't play enough minutes to be on there. I don't know. There's just not, there's not four defensive guards I would put on there. (laughs) But there's so many centers. There's... There's quite a few forwards as well. Uh, I said Draymond Green, Julius Randle, Mikael Bridges. I mean, Giannis deserves some credit. Anthony Davis, LeBron James, the prior to AD and LeBron both just uh, haven't played enough games, I would think. But either way, uh, there's there's also quite a few forwards. Keldon Johnson, Royce O'Neal. Like, there's a lot of forwards. Not nearly as many as the centers. Not nearly as deserving as the centers, but... They deserve to be in the conversation. And then I just look over the guard position. Maybe I said DeJounte Murray. The next guy up is TJ McConnell. Like TJ McConnell would be, at this point in time, TJ McConnell is the other defensive guard. Let's just make it clear. He's a bench guard. Like he, he doesn't play like starter minutes. Uh, I just don't understand (laughs) how that makes sense. You know, when these centers have so much defensive impact, we're probably going to be awarding a guy and, you know, uh, TJ McConnell does deserve some recognition, but he's not on the same level of defensive impact as all these centers. Yet, yet he's going to be the one we see on the all-defensive team. It's just like, how does this make sense? How? Uh, I don't, I can't comprehend this this just doesn't make sense. Especially, I mean, this doesn't even matter about positionless basketball. No, this is just how NBA basketball is played. These are the best defensive players in the league. Why are they not being recognized as such? Why do we need to, you know, hold to these 
standards of being, you know, four guards. Come on, then. I don't think there's ever been four guards who just, like, totally deserve that defensive recognition over the centers. Uh, I don't think that's, I don't think that's ever been the case. There's, I don't, there's, maybe there's a time when the four guards were to- four of the top ten defenders in the NBA, but I just find it unlikely, and yeah, I, I just feel like there needs to be some change here, because someone's not getting awarded this year who deserves to be recognized, and you know, uh, we'll see how it goes, but this is just something I wanted to talk about. Anyways, thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe. I don't know. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.